Well, hi folks. Third or fourth of August now. I can't remember what which evening time, and it's absolutely freezing. Look, it's about to start chucking it down. This horrible summer continues weather-wise. So I'll just give you a quick look round and show you what's going on. We'll start in the uh, in the other end first because the wind's at my back. So well, I'm going to start off with the kale, which is just absolutely crazy. You just pick it, and it just keeps growing. It's it's the easiest plant I've ever known to grow that and it's a brassica and it doesn't get affected by cabbage whites at all so I've no need to uh, to net it at all so it's a fantastic veg if you like your sort of spinachy type flavour it's quite irony flavoured but it's, it's just look at that it's idiot proof slugs don't seem to bother it too much and butterflies which is the big problem don't seem to bother it either cabbages now these are the savoys they're absolutely massive now. If I can get, well, my hand's not quite close, but they're nearly as big as a football, some of them, so I'm going to have to start eating some of these soon. They're the early ones. I've got some later ones, but I didn't realise they'd be that quick, these. I hope to, you know, I'd hope they'd be about that size, little sort of mini ones, but that size, I've got some bigger ones in the next bit, so uh, crazy those. Mini Savoy, if you fancy some early Savoys, try that. I think that's all they're called. They were just called Mini Savoy, or no, Caserta, that was the name. Leeks starting to grow a little bit now. I've weeded the, weeded them. I'm, I'm only growing a few, and they're quite close together. So I'm not after any great big ones because I don't actually eat that many leeks. I'm not the world's biggest fan. The onions, some of them that didn't bolt, they're not too bad now, but they're not the best crop I've ever had by a long chalk this year. I shall be pulling these up in a week or so. I'm not bothered weeding them because I'm just going to let them flop over, and then we'll pull them up, dry them off, and try and store them. A few more lettuces and spring onions there. They're the turnips I've managed to thin out. And they've, they've shot on since I thinned them out because they must have been about 20 to a square inch. So uh, they were just getting leggy and not doing very well. So as soon as I thinned them out, they've all started growing individually now. Second lot of peas now. Got pods on. They will be should be ready probably in a week's time because the first lot have just finished now. I've had about 20 pound of podded pod peas with pods from the other lot so uh, it's not been a it's not been a, a bad crop really this year considering the weather right onto the marrows the plants are finally starting to grow yeah, I'll just show you if a bit late in the season but we've got a couple of marrows set on this one I'll see which one grows bigger more vigorously and chop the other one off or if one's looking to be a better shape I'll kill the other one but I have got an actually a bigger one on this plant which is a bit more vigorous if you see that's about getting on for 15 foot long now and we've got one on here which is about a week old and it's growing nicely that one so I think I might keep that and you can grow that for six weeks it should be quite a big one I've got a couple a bit further on there if they start really flying along I can always get rid of that one but uh, I think that's the one at the moment we're going to stick with and hopefully, because these were all from 100 plus, plus, 100 plus, plus Mara seeds, so they've got the sort of genetics in them to to produce big ones. But whether or not I'll get a big one myself, it's all up to the weather and Mother Nature. So anyway, that's that bit. I'll uh, show you the rest. Right, folks, here we are in the polytunnel now, and uh, I'll just let you have a look at some of the stuff. As usual, the courgettes, I've never seen anything produce as many as this. If you look at it, it's a bush variety, and what I do is I put canes in to sort of grow it upright. So it's probably about two foot six tall now, and it just keeps producing fruit after fruit. If you can see that's the growing tip. If you can keep it growing upright, you just keep staking it with stakes, and it grows upright, and they just pop out of the side. But I must have had, well, you can see this is where I've taken them from, all the way down to the bottom. I must have had 24 or so so far, and there's no signs of it uh, slowing up at all. Same thing with the beans, I'm, I'm honestly getting fed up with eating these now, I'm eating them nearly every day and they need picking again. I only picked them two days ago and they're just hanging again. Like I said, cobra beans, if you've never tried them, give them a go because they're so prolific, it's unbelievable and so easy to grow. If you've got a bit of cover, they might be a bit difficult outside with them being a climbing variety but uh, if you can keep the wind from battering them, they should be okay. The onion, the big onion, I think it's just about petered out now. As you can see, it's ripening off the skin. So that's the size of it. It's just short of 24 inches now, so it's maybe knocking on eight pounds. I'm keeping on measuring it, and if it doesn't grow in anything in a week, I'll, I'll pull it up, I'll do a video and weigh it and see what it is. 
but I don't think it's going to grow any longer because if you look at the leaves they're starting to dry up and the skin as well carrots I won't bore you with this again growing amazingly well probably a bit too fast same thing with the stump with the long carrots still not got any going to seed thankfully that's the little thing you're looking for a big seed head coming and if, if that happens then that's it they're, they're buggered so uh, thankfully none of that yet right the giant tomatoes and I'll just get around this side now these are hilarious now I mean that's one of the smallest and this is the biggest so far I've never seen anything as big as that it must be what getting on for six inches across still growing it's absolutely crazy so there's one there there's another one there and there's another one underneath uh, so this plant's produced three giants so far and it's still got plenty of life left in it I think but absolutely crazy so uh, it's quite good fun just watching daft things grow really big that's one of those double ones two f two flowers fused together so still should have plenty of life so we'll see how big they get anyway right same with the carrots I had a big flood in here the other day because we had three inches of rain in an hour the whole village was flooded out I came up here and there was just a, a river running straight through my paths so that doesn't bode well for this bed because it's obviously soaked the bed and if you get a really high influx of water with carrots in one go then they just tend to split so uh, as you can see that one has split there but I'm just hoping the big one hasn't done and they just grow steadily away right show onions I'm quite happy now actually with these if I just get in they're not big at all they're about 15 inch circumference and so maybe getting on for two in two pounds but like I said there's some quite nice shaped ones in amongst them so what I'll do I'll give these another week and then I'll lift them take them home and strip the skins off and dry them out for the show so I'll give them five weeks to hopefully get to a nice brown colour so that's about all there is going on in the polytunnel I'll just show you the last bit outside I'll show you how much water I collected if you see I've just got a little strip of this uh, guttering on the side of my polytunnel only the quarter of it and that goes into these water butts and that's how much they've got they're all sort of filtered into each other one at each end and I filled nearly six water butts full with just that one hour of rain the other day so it's nearly a thousand litres with <laughs> from an hour's rain, it's absolutely crazy. Right, I'll just show you the rest of the bits and pieces. Potatoes, absolutely huge now. Thankfully, no sign of blight, which you'd expect with sarpoles, but I've got King Edwards in there and some kestrel and all sorts, and thankfully, no sign of any blight whatsoever, and plants getting up a four foot tall. So uh, hopefully we should get some really good results later on, once they've died down, sort of September, October time, so hoping to get some really good uh, huge baking potatoes and things like that out right it's a bit weedy actually at the moment because I've been a bit uh, busy at work garlic still still growing well did find a little bit of rust on a few but it's not uh, it's not spread at all and actually I can't find any now so I've had a little scratch about because I did look about about three weeks ago and there wasn't any sign of a bulb forming so I'll just show you now they're actually forming now they're not massive probably inch and a half two inches across but uh, if I can get them to grow another two weeks should have some nice sized bulbs as usual I was worrying that I might have a disaster this year because usually have quite a good crop of garlic but uh, hopefully if they keep growing they should be okay lettuces again third lot of lettuce the banana shallots giant ones which are not too giant this year so uh, put that down to experience and bad weather early on getting lots of spring onions now just taking clumps and clumps of these that's the peas, if you look now they're just about finished, there's only an odd little runt hanging on here and there as you can see when they start yellowing off that's it, well the, the pods have stopped, the old thing's finished so uh, like I said I've got about 10 ice cream tubs, 5 litre ice cream tubs full of pods off it so happy with that, I've got a freezer full now all frozen so uh, and some more to come right another one of these ridiculous savoy cabbages and that is even bigger and get my hand anywhere near it it's just huge a savoy cabbage in not in august i just can't understand it the size of them so uh, i mean at this rate we're getting hot weather they're just going to explode sorry about the weed in there that's the trouble with having these nets you can't get into weed that's the the big savoy the sort of later savoy and as you can see look tiny maybe the size of a cricket ball 
a lot darker leaves so they should stand well into winter that's what I was expecting so that's about it folks I think third or fourth I'm not sure what date it is losing track of time these days of August and this horrible summer of ours continues it's freezing cold it's about 14 degrees and we've not had any sun for about two weeks so uh, but still things are still things are growing okay well I thought I had to pull one of these up just just to show you the size of these cabbages look at the size of that in the middle of summer can't believe the size of them look at it eh? so there we go first of all of the year absolutely huge shame it's a bit big actually but there you go so anyway that's about it folks See you later.